Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, we are in low Earth orbit today, and after yesterday's adventure, realizing that uh, I don't really have a comm network of anything to speak of set up, uh, I thought I'd set one up. And then I realized that I do have some commsats in orbit, I just neglected to ever maneuver them into position. So uh, if you remember this little guy, uh, I think this is Keyhole 1. These were kind of my uh, excuse to fly uh, STS-1 a long time ago, was to deploy three of these little guys. And uh, I never actually got them placed in orbit. So I'm going to be using uh, MechJeb to plot the nodes and uh, circularize. Uh, this little guy has a apoapsis, or an apogee, of 1.004 million meters. I thought that was a good place to start, and I'd just kind of see what kind of fuel availability was left over after that burn. Uh, getting them up to a million cost a little less than half of its available fuel. So we're just going to uh, see what... Um, I don't know, the circularization will take us, or will cost, and go from there. But uh, really, I don't plan on, I don't know, sitting here and boring you guys with all of the necessary issues with... Uh, getting all of these in orbit, I'll probably just cut it together with a bunch of sped up footage of pretty much this. We are not quite in daylight. Oh, that's very nice, actually. You know, I did not mean to hit F3, I meant to hit F2. That's a fairly pretty picture. Alright, we're within a minute or so of the node. I don't know what MechJeb is telling us this burn time is going to be because the estimated burn time is not available. So, like I said, probably just going to not really go into a whole lot of detail. I'm sure all of you know how to circularize orbits. I'm just going to be kind of timing it by hand and hoping for the best. Yeah, well, with it being out of fuel and whatnot, a 1.005 by 1.00072, not too terrible. I guess uh, we figured out about the threshold for these things. Not bad. Now, uh, yeah, let me just, uh, that one's pointed at Mars, so this one's probably pointed at Venus. I am going to change that to active vessel. And we'll jump out to the map view and switch to our next one. So I know exactly how exciting these uh, planning planned orbit things can be. So I, I've done you all the favor and sped them up greatly in post. And this is Keyhole 3 rounding out its orbit and then switching over to Keyhole 2 and getting it uh, into position after waiting a little while and then rounding out its orbit. All right, well, it's uh, certainly not perfect. It's certainly not in an ideal spot for most launches that will be uh, inclined relative to the moon, which is this line here, but it was already in orbit and it does give us uh, some kind of connection. Although actually, uh, I know that this has a couple of uh, antennas also. So we're gonna switch out here to our uh, Bellarati keyhole satellite. It is a Bellarati mapper with the keyhole comms equipment. Oh yeah. So just in case that this little guy should be overhead at any given point, and I guess uh, on its 7 million, or million meter orbit, that probably won't reach things. Yeah, that one is pointed to active vessel. Well, who to thunk it, right? Okay, so that should be helping again a little bit, perhaps, and maybe. There is the view we were looking for. So Hopefully we won't have much of an issue in the future, although certainly sinking about uh, some geosynchronous satellites would not be a bad idea. Um, putting one... Ugh. <laughs> yeah, I guess there's just a few places where I'd need one. They're all inclined at the same orbit as the moon. 
So not geostationary, just geosynchronous. Uh, but that's stuff we're going to have to worry about in the future. We've got uh, some other things I want to get to in this episode, so I'll pick you guys up in just a second. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We are joining our recently uh, launched uh, Jassy 1 in, uh, well, it's you know about a month into its mission, 28 days or so, and it's time for it to make its correction burn to put it on a trajectory more to my liking with Jupiter. So in order to save fuel, uh, I should have turned SAS off first. Because now that's just going to wobble back and forth and we're going to waste fuel. So I'm going to turn the fuel off until 78 seconds from now. The command reaches there. Basically we've got a 242.6 meter per second burn to get through. Uh, Alright, well, four minutes to do it in. So we're just going to have to go to town on this. Sorry. And now SAS is going to turn off right in the middle of the burn. <laughs> I know exactly how this is going to go. Alright. Uh, I don't think 242 meters per second should take this thing all that long. It is pretty much empty. Uh, I don't even know if it's got 242 meters per second. Oh, it does not. It's got 187. Oh, that's a problem. Why are we stopping time warp? We're three minutes out from this burn. What are we doing here? Okay, well, I I love those random stoppages. All right, well, uh, that means I'm going to have to program in with a... What's our delay time? 78 seconds. It's like a minute and some change. A minute and 18 seconds. It'll take us 11 seconds to burn through this fuel. Oh god, I hate trying to time this stuff. <laughs> so if I start the burn 11 seconds before the node, that'll kill, that'll get rid of all of this as we hit the node, which means a uh, 78 seconds before the node, I need to hit the stagey button to stage. This should be fun, right? Well, you know, here goes. Uh, I, I may have missed it. Just by a second or two. Decouple. And then we wait for that command. Turn SAS back on also. Now we can time warp just a touch. I don't know how much of this I want to do before the node and how much I want to do after. <laughs> Very unstable. But I know I need this stage to be out of fuel when we get there, so uh, we're going to go at the 20 second mark. So let's ullage. Stable, that was fast. Ignition. mostly staying on target come on this is important and there we go all right well now we just have to wait for the staging event go ahead and unlock these thrusters and we can kill the throttle we don't really need that but we do want to be pointed in the correct direction because that decoupler will impart a little bit of force that we can uh there we go yeah see that helped a bit right and now SAS is on. Yeah, this isn't even going to give us a Delta V readout. How nice. <laughs> oh, we're showing a draw on our electric charge. That is very interesting. You know, those avionics are already shut down. Interesting. I guess for the time being, we don't need these two. So we'll deactivate both of them. Try to stay on the node.
Now let's jump out to the Jupiter view and see what this is buying us. All right, not not bad at all. You can get in good and low, kill it. And there go the dogs, of course. All right, uh, and our periapsis is about two million or so meters outside of Jupiter's atmosphere. That puts us nice and low, so we can take advantage of that Oberth effect for our orbital insertion. Let's see what a quality orbital insertion here looks like, because really I was hoping to come in on the other side of the planet. Yeah, wow. <laughs> if I were to get everything I wanted out of this mission, it looks like I would need another 10 kilometers per second. Or so, perhaps. Oh, wow. 15 kilometers per second to insert into that kind of super low polar orbit. That is amazing. Oh, God. All right. So what we are going to do is just capture. Very nice. That's uh, 843 meters per second, which is a bit uh, more than I would have liked. Considering, yeah, 50 meters per second costs us about 10 units of fuel. This should be interesting. Well, as long as it can capture. If it can capture, we can certainly dump one of these guys into the mix. Uh, just where it will be and how much of that uh, data we can get out. I mean, maybe we can just dip his fingers in a little bit. Uh, hopefully not enough to where he'll break up on the atmosphere first pass, but we'll give him enough enough time to dip in, collect some science, shoot back out the other side, radio it up to the mothership, or bounce the signal off the mothership to radio it home, and we can collect our science that way. But I don't think we're going to get anything... F you know, while burning up uh, on the far side of uh, Jupiter anyway. Which will be significantly less nifty to look at, but right now we're happy with what we've got. And um, this kind of accuracy from so far out is, I'm pretty happy with that. Even though that orbit is quite a ways away. Anyway, so I think that's going to do it for this episode. I need to set my alarm while I'm thinking about it. We're just going to do it for SOI change. Add alarm. But in one month, we have our maneuver to go around plant, or the moon Io of Jupiter with our Jossum B1. Uh, that will be in tomorrow's episode. So thank you, everybody, so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and uh, I will see all of you in the next one. Until then, see you later.